After moving into our beloved camper van and traveling for the past few months, the weather has officially turned and we've now found ourselves back at the shop with a new winter challenge ahead. One of the first projects we do on a CNC that has actually meaning. We're well rested from our much needed digital detox and revving up to share the exciting happenings of this modern workshop, showing how all these innovative machines are about to change everything. So we finally have a little bit more time to play with the CNC. We're testing the tube cutting machine. Uh, particularly, we're testing the square tubing joints. That means you have a square tube, you cut a bit of an angle with the log, so you can just take the square tube, and bend it on 90 degrees, and end up with nice 90 degrees angle that saves a lot of time when assembling such a profiles. Making 2D files is so easy for us after going through the intense training when building our camper van. The amount of 3D models was just mind-bugging, but it truly pushed our skills to another level. Now we use the CNC very quickly, so it feels like a human body extension. Bending joints for square tubing are so practical. We can very quickly and repeatedly assemble a rectangular shape for welding. This machine is just so incredible for repetitive, accurate parts. All of these parts, we would take a long time to drill out, measure, cut out, grind, uh, shape. And this is just incredible. Like this is, I think, the closest we can get from a 3D model to physical object with minimum effort. Model like this welding jig is a matter of maybe two hours for us to draw and likely another two hours to laser cut and weld together. It's incredible how fast the humans can abstract this sophisticated product and effortlessly convert it in a physical object. We design everything so it's machinable on this machine. That means square tubing, metal plates, everything we can easily CNC cut on this. That dictates the design and that means super convenient and very easy Lego-like assembly. Welding with CO2 is so fast. <laughs> I don't know anything like this that can be this quickly assembled. We use the CNC for our e-bike prototyping and, uh, and manufacturing small little custom parts. It's incredibly helpful tool and expands beyond our 3D printing capabilities. You guys remember if you follow the Ladie and Margaret original channel, we did at the very beginning renovation of the offices inside. So if I go through this uh, saw and an entrance going to the container, here is the old office and we completely shift away from this. This, is, this hasn't been used for a long time. Now what we realized, this actually has a potential as we grow the 3D printing farm that we should completely transition everything here as we have a lot of surface already established for 3D printers and all of these shelves would work well for cleaning stuff and filament and I think we'll start slowly shifting everything here and this would be a nice farm. We received long-awaited Prusa XL, large format printer and I'm very impressed with it. Sturdy, small, industrial-like printer. It allows us to print bigger parts in one piece, so no follow-up gluing is needed. This front shock mudguard model is something we wanted to do for a long time, so we are 
immediately experimenting with the dual material options. Two heads are very practical for two color material printing. The color changes only a few seconds operation. I'm blown away. So these front four mart guards look like can be the first type we'll be using on all of our front forks that we use on e-bike 5 and cyberbike. They need a bit of a cleanup, maybe some tweaking as we go, maybe a little bit different graphics, but overall, yeah, this will work. This will be stiff enough and will definitely add to the looks of the cyberbike. Now I just need to clean them up. It's worth to finally reduce printing noise by installing them on tiles and vibration reduction material. Now this is how loud it is with nothing. That's pretty loud. <laughs> so now when Pavel lifts it up, it's much, much quieter. Already a big difference. This insulation that we have from the camper van build <clears throat> might actually do the job. It's much softer foam. I'm, I'm expecting it to be much quieter. The result is beyond impressive. I don't know why we did it so long without. It was so noisy in our room. It's pretty cool. We can be working on multiple projects at the same time. And uh, this, we're filming the e-bike version 5 assembly video that will be public on YouTube. It's for all the people who are interested in seeing what the assembly process looks like and it's also for all the customers who purchased e-bike version 5 kit and uh, want to assemble it home. We took one day to visit Machinery Expo in nearby city Brno to just see what the latest trends are. Our cyberbike is shown as an example of practical 3D printing use, so we took the opportunity to install the new Modguard models. What we are mainly after is learning more about CNC press brakes, and I learned a lot from all the brand representatives. CNC press brake is a single purpose device allowing to bend metal sheets. CNC because you have motorized stops, and adjustable pressure for repetitive and consistent metal sheet bending. These machines are around 60,000 US dollars, which is out of our budget. So like always, I need to think outside of the box. Secondhand machines commonly sell around 16,000 US dollars and I ended up taking a risk and purchased this non-functioning scarecrow for 6,000. It turns on, computer runs normally, but the seller is not capable to initiate the pressing motion. These guys are resellers and obviously don't understand this machine, so I'm betting on a simple safety problem we can fix. This is a 4 ton machine and I've never seen heavy duty forklift in action. I'm quickly educated, they use it for moving shipping containers. I'm very lucky my dad has this truck, so this whole purchase happens very quickly and dynamically. We left at 3 a.m. and we were back at the workshop by 3 p.m. We'll see what happens next, if we can make this grandpa work or not. <laughs> we love having the opportunity to try out different power stations and immediately I'm already a huge fan of Yoshino's new B330 SST. This portable station houses a 241 watt hour capacity within its build. It delivers 330 watts of power and features AC, DC, and USB outputs to power your gadgets and keep all of your devices charged. It's the ideal choice for road trips, camping, backyard parties, or wherever adventure takes you. 
we're on vacation with my family this week and with so many little kids running around, it's been super easy for us to forget to charge our phones or Bluetooth speaker, but Yoshino has had our back. The B330 is a lightweight, compact design with a convenient handle and built-in LED light. Its 10 pound weight makes it ideal for life on the road, effortly transitioning from indoor charging to on-the-go power, from job sites to campfires. Off the bat, it's easy to see the impressive quality and strength of this unit. This station's solid state battery is a game changer and will soon be redefining the entire battery market. It offers longer lasting, safer, and greener power. This tech is bringing advanced and sustainable power to everyday activities and contributes to a lower carbon future. A solid state battery distinguishes itself from a conventional lithium battery by employing advanced solid electrolytes instead of flammable liquid electrolytes. Solid state batteries, despite their significantly higher energy densities, offer enhanced safety measures both during usage and while being stored or transported. It pretty much offers an unmatched power to weight ratio, delivering up to twice the power per pound. Another awesome feature is that you can check your power station status, charge levels, runtime, and settings all from your phone. Yoshino's Black Friday deals are now live, running from November 10th through 30th, and we also have a discount code that will cut the price for all of our viewers. Don't miss out. If you remember our container project from earlier this year, it's slowly moving forward, but obviously gets much less attention. We finished outside of the container with green color. It nicely blends in this environment. Now it's time to start finishing the land from the back to the front, so we can shelter the van at the back of the land when we need the full barn capacity. We built a retaining wall and stairs towards the creek at the back of the land and I can already imagine the tiles and the green grass next year. We usually take few hours now and then to have some physical exercise and progress on this land. 